someone in the family starts adopting the low carbohydrate lifestyle, uh, others follow. Uh, yeah. That you you do notice that, right? Oh, but absolutely, it's- yeah. But it's this lovely sort of ripple effect that you you can't measure it. So even though I know that I've got lots of patients who shed several stone and got rid of their prediabetes or their diabetes and the blood pressure problems, I know that it's also having a positive impact on their work colleagues. You know, I'm always hearing these stories of, oh, yeah, the girls at work have decided they're impressed by what I'm doing and they're doing it too. Um, so, yeah, no, it's, it's absolutely lovely seeing how this, you know, this positive um, sort of yeah this this change in lifestyle that actually makes a difference and people enjoy you know is is definitely sort of propagating that that's actually amazing because that's exactly what happened in my own family as well it just took me the type 1 diabetic to actually do it first and I had a good reason to to try and experiment with this but everyone else followed yeah no, that's, that's so powerful, isn't it? Seeing somebody, somebody you know and respect or love, it, you know, seeing them getting a hold of their, you know, sort of like, you know, their, 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 their sort of health trajectory, you know, witnessing that is really powerful. And, and actually it gives people hope as well, doesn't it? They can, you know, they can see actually if, if Mary can do it and you've got more challenges to your body than they have to theirs, then they, then they absolutely can, can do it. So I think that's fantastic. You're a beacon. <laughs> You're a beacon oh, of hope. <laughs> Thank you so much. You've been an inspiration to me. You've been so supportive to me online. And, uh, you know, <laughs> thank you so much. I uh, Actually, it's, it's interesting because people are now adopting the low carbohydrate lifestyle, even when they don't have type 2 diabetes or blood pressure problems. So they're, they're using it as a prevent, preventative sort of lifestyle, so a method rather. Uh, to avoid developing uh, insulin resistance and so so that, that's amazing right I mean you do something now so you don't end up end up with type 2 diabetes and that's amazing to see that is just so powerful it's inspiring for me as well yeah it makes so much sense doesn't it I mean and, and I never had um, diabetes or pre-diabetes but I decided to go down that road myself just because I could see that other professionals were doing it and I and I was like what, what am I missing out on um, and actually I feel so much better on it as well you don't get that sort of slump after your carby lunch and you feel mm. a bit more switched on and you're not you're not a slave to your hunger anymore and and I had a really busy day yesterday and I, I managed to skip through breakfast and lunch without being even hungry at all and and it was brilliant because I wasn't sort of reaching for the biscuit tin in the way that I would have been previously and and that's got to be good for long-term health isn't it not having yeah those highs and lows all the time but also it's not just about, um, you know, everyone's got their own goals, haven't they? It's not just about preventing type 2 diabetes, but it's also about reducing your risk of dementia, isn't it? And a number of cancers and um, various other issues as well. So, yeah, there's lots of lots of reasons to to get your blood sugars stable, I think. And then the COVID pandemic, too. I mean, that's been very obviously something that's been more sort of um, hard hitting for people who, you know, for whatever reason, have, um, you know, unhealthy metabolism. So, yeah, that was one of my motivating factors, actually, at the beginning of the pandemic. I thought, gosh, I need to tighten up my diet because I'm going to meet COVID at some point. I want to have really good, stable blood sugars when, when that happens. Mm-hmm.